in this video we will complete our enemy ai by writing its attack and pain state and thereby ending this tutorial series i will be a little fast in this video as this part is just a extended implementation of the stuff we have already covered in part 3 and part 4 so if you haven't watched them i would recommend you to give them a go with this let us start under our chase state we first make our attack site similar to our previous such sites we will enter into attack state if and only if our player enters this attacking site box. Speaking of attack state, we will make a new 3D and attach a script inheriting our state class to it. The code is pretty much the same as our idle state, so let me just copy paste that and replace the animation to the attacking one including adding the animation reference in our base state class. Now, we want to be in this state only when we are attacking and move to the chase state when we are done. For this, we will connect a function to our animation finish signal. This function will set a boolean called has attack true for us, signaling that our attack animation is finished. And under our process frame function, we will check if has attack is true and if it is, we will return the chase state. Now that we have written our attack state code, not to be confused with the actual attack hitbox let us see how we can transition from our chase state to our attack state first and foremost we add the attack state's reference in our base state class under our chase state code add the reference to our attack site area 3d and similar to our chase state code if our attack site has any overlapping bodies in it that is the player we will just simply return our attack state great with both the transitions done let us see how we can actually attack the player since we are primarily working on a melee attack we will make a hitbox for it, ideally close to the enemy's body and in front of it, with the collision mask set to the player's layer. Make a new script for our hitbox. This script will do the actual attacking to the player. Connect our hitboxes on area entered signal to a bare function in the script. And for the sake of this tutorial, let us just call the colliding area's owner, that is the player, and run a random function called do damage in it. Let us quickly make that function in our player script, say we just print out. And yeah, we are pretty much code wise done and just some tweaking of our animation is left. Jumping into that, open your animation player, specifically the enemy's attack animation. You see, the thing is, we don't actually want our hitbox to be on all the time. Why? Because then our player will be dealt damage continuously. As, as soon as we enter this hitbox's range, we will run our do damage function and deal damage to the player. The fix for this problem is to actually have our hitbox be off by default and only be turned on while this attack animation is running more specifically during the active frames of this animation that is frame 2 and 3 so let us just disable our hitbox and only turn it on during the frame 2 and 3 of this animation now we are 90 percent there but as you can see once our enemy enters its attacking range it will keep spamming its attack while we're inside said range we don't want that as this is a pretty bad game design and we ideally want the enemy to chase you for a while before attacking again the solution to this is pretty simple. We lock our attack transition behind a can attack boolean, which is false by default whenever we enter our chase state. It is only when this boolean is true that our enemy can transition to our attack state. There are many strategies to turn this to true, but again, for sake of simplicity of this tutorial, we will turn this to true when we change our initial chase phase. This ensures that we have chased our player for a good while, that is during the first phase, before being allowed to attack again. With this, we have completed the attack state part of our enemy AI. Pat yourself on the back because the pain state is just a glorified hurt box, something which we have already done in this part and in the previous one as well. Just like before, we will add a empty node and an area 3D to our enemy. These will act as our pain state and our hurt box respectively. Reshape the hurt box to be near and around our enemy's body and make a new script for it. The purpose of the script is to A. Deal damage to our enemy and B. Change our state to the pain state. For the former, we can just do a print statement like before. But for the latter, we need the references to our state machine and our pain state. Inside the new damage function of the script, we will call our state machine's change state function with our pain state as the function argument. Speaking of pain state, the code is pretty much the same as our attack state one. Let me just copy paste that. Rename our attack anim to the pain anim and replace the has attacked boolean with a more appropriately named has painted boolean. Do some animation changes like in our attack state part 
heart although just the opposite that is our heart box is on by default but gets disabled whenever our enemy enters the pain state and enabled again whenever it exits it this is to prevent our player from continuously spamming the enemy with attacks and essentially stun locking it and with this we are done not only with our pain state but with this tutorial series as a whole and don't forget to like and subscribe okay bye